All right, students, so I wanted to give you a uh, brief demonstration to remind you on how to use the animator's toolbar in Photoshop. So when you open up Photoshop, what you should do first before you create a new document from the start window is go up to window at the top and change your workspace to motion. And that just gets you out of that start menu. <clears throat> And what you'll see is there's a timeline down here and in your work area right here and layers over here. Uh, those are the areas that you're mainly going to concern yourself with animating in Photoshop. Uh, then before you create a new document, don't do it the typical file new way. Uh, you want to get your toolbar up and do it through that. So under window to get the toolbar, you need to go under extensions and activate the animators toolbar free. And you'll probably get it docked over here, uh, I would think. I think that's what it does by default. So if you click this, that opens and closes it. What I like to do, though, is dock it on top of the timeline. And the advantage of that is when you come back, when you get out of Photoshop, and if you come back in on the same computer, um, this animator's toolbar is just automatically on top of the timeline. Uh, or when you act activate it, it remembers that's where you docked it last. And it'll show up right there. You don't have it you know, tucked away over here and kind of in the middle of your screen. So I just clicked on the tab where it says Animator's Toolbar to lift it up and then place it right above the timeline so you get that solid blue line all the way across and let go. And now it'll be docked right on top of your timeline. Uh, so from there, I'm not going to show you what every single button does in this lesson. I just want to show you how to get started. So from here, this first button here is the new animation project. And by the way, it says over here, there's a little gray um, text area that says what button you're looking at, which is helpful. So you'll see this says new animation project. When I click on that, there's several things you can do. You can give it a name. Uh, you can choose from some preset sizes. So I usually do either 720 or 1080p HD. Uh, you can also type in a custom width and height. Uh, and then, but this is the most important part is you want to check video group under generate for this to work most efficiently. And you also want to change your duration to just two frames. And I'll explain why in a second. So what this should look like is all zeros except for the last digit, which is a two. Um, if you don't do this, otherwise it creates a solid video bar for whatever dura duration was default. And you just have to move that back to two frames, which is what you want each layer on uh, for each um, frame of animation. So if you just start with two frames, it's easier, and you don't have to do as much dragging around with the layers. So two frames, 24 frames per second, and video group is selected. Don't forget those two steps, otherwise this will look different. Okay, so now I have a canvas, and you can see there's a video group over here in my layers, and the first layer, layer zero. And how that looks in my timeline is, I see my video group, and there's a layer right there when I select it you see it's selected. I'm going to zoom in with this little mountain here so you can see this a little better. So you'll see there's two frames of that layer right there. Now I could start drawing and insert frames with these two buttons later. One of these just inserts a blank frame and then this ups the exposure so you can hit plus or minus based on how many frames you want to expose that new blank frame. Uh, however, before I start drawing, what I like to do is just fill my canvas with several frames. Let's treat this as like these are just different pieces of paper if this was a traditional animation. And one trick to that, if you just hit the new frame button, insert blank frame right here, it's going to insert uh, a new layer but just that one frame and then you also have to hit this one to expose it for two frames, which is kind of annoying. So instead, um, it'll recognize that you already have a frame at two frames. So if I just hold down the Alt or Option key and click this Insert Blank Frame button, it automatically recognizes that you have a, a frame before this that's held for two exposures, uh, or a layer that's held for two exposures, and it'll create another one held for two exposures. So just making sure you hold down the Option key or Alt key, you click this button, and I can just fill this with as many frames as I want. And that'll just keep growing the timeline as many places as you need. So once you have that, and you can just fill this up to however many 
frames that you'll need in your box cycle. So I might decide that there's 24 frames in this walk cycle. Could be more, could be less, just depends on what kind of style you're going for. <clears throat> Before I start drawing, what you need to make sure, you'll notice with my brush tool, or pencil tool, or any other drawing tool, uh, I can't draw on this because my time slider is at a different spot than the layer that's selected. So my last layer that I just created is selected. That's the only layer I can draw on. So you just want to make sure, the one thing that, that if you're not getting the ability to draw, that's just because you have the wrong layer selected. So if you just click on this first layer, which is where my time slider is, now I can start drawing. And I'm doing this with the mouse, so it's going to look awful, but bear with me. And then you'll notice after those two frames, if that drawing's held for two frames, it'll go away. Before I can draw again, I just have to select the next frame, and then I can start drawing again. Now, right now, I'm just kind of guessing where this you know, next frame should be, unless I just like, kind of cycle back and forth like this. Uh, so a more efficient way to work is with onion skinning, kind of like you can do in Dragon. To turn onion skinning on, that's this last button here that looks like a light bulb. And I can click on that, and now you'll see kind of a faded version of the previous drawing so that I can draw the next frame. And you notice it just goes back one frame, so I don't see it anymore after I'm on the second frame of this exposure. And then that, this now highlight you know, is less visibility. I can click on my third frame and draw this out. Now, if you want to see further frames back, there are some options to this onion skin settings. So if I hold down control and click, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It would be Alt and click, I think. There we go. So you have the Alt key or Option key and click. Uh, you'll see my onion skin count. I can set how many frames before and after I want to see, as well as if you want to adjust any other settings in terms of the visibility. So I'm going to go to maybe like four frames before. And I'll leave the frames after to just one. But now I can see you know, all three of these exposures at different varying opacities to kind of see the direction of my, my ball or whatever I'm animating. So let's say I spring this up. Again, so notice how I'm selecting before I start drawing. <laughs> mouse mouse uh, circles are kind of difficult. rest here. Let's get to come back down, you get the idea. Cool, and then let me zoom out on my timeline so I can see more of these frames at once. And there's my animation. Now I'm gonna just Click this button to toggle the onion skin settings back off. And so now you don't see onion skin anymore just because I highlighted that. And I can animate. You can loop playback or turn loop playback off with the settings wheel and the space bar will play. Oop, I just know my work area was really short there. Let me pull that back. So whatever you play is defined by this work area here. So just make sure that includes all of your frames. And you can play it. Lastly, once you're ready to render this out, these uh, set of lines here, all the way on the far side of the motion timeline, there's a render video option. And then we'll let this load up. And here you can name it select where it's going. Um, I recommend keeping this format here, this H.264 format, high quality. Document size just uh, stays the same. So I don't really need to change anything and I could render this out and create my, my animated movie file. All right, there you go. That's how you animate in Photoshop with the Animators Toolbar. Thanks.